Okay, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, welcome to the virtual happy hour tours at the Alfond Inn. I wish we could all be gathering at the lobby of the Alfond Inn to do a tour of the artwork on display there. For now, we're going to meet here and hope that we'll see each other um, very soon at the Alfond Inn. My name is Cicela Carbonell. I am the curator of the Cornell Fine Arts Museum at Rollins College. And today we're going to be talking about a selection of works um, from the Alphon collection that speak to this particular moment in a very positive and uplifting way. And I hope that you are inspire, inspired and encouraged at the end of this tour to visit the Alphon. So before we begin with the, with the tour of the works, I wanted to let you know that the Alphon Din is open. Um, if you would like to go see the works in person, you don't need a ticket. You can just go to the Alphond and enjoy the artwork there. Um, the museum is also open, so I'll share with you information about how to reserve tickets um, to go see the exhibitions at the museum on campus. So if you're familiar with the Alphond Inn, you know that the collection that we displayed at, display at the Alphond is part of the larger permanent collection of the Cornell Fine Arts Museum at Rollins. The collection uh, of contemporary artworks at the Alphond um, is now up to about 500 pieces. And this collection has been described as a visual syllabus for liberal arts education. So each and every work that is included in this co collection um, speaks to the values of a liberal arts education and it's um, in total alignment with the values of the college, which we'll see in a couple of minutes when we look at some examples. So for our tour today, I have selected a few works that help us to imagine a different world, encourage us to explore possibilities, and inspire us to connect, to connect with other people, connect with other communities, connect with our environment, and connect with the world. So those are very big notions and big ideas. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how a selection of four artists represented in the collection address some of these universal big notions in their works. And so when we do tours at the Alphonse, we usually, I usually like to start my tours here um, in the conservatory with this amazing sculpture hanging from the dome suspended in the space and transforming it with the reflection, beautiful reflection of light in different colors. So let's take a, a closer look at this piece. You may be familiar with it if you have visited the Alphonse Din. This is a work by Tomas Araceno, uh, who was born in Argentina in 1930, uh, 1973, excuse me. He currently lives and works in um, Germany mostly. Um, and so this is a very emblematic piece of the Alphonse. It's a familiar work. I'm going to talk about two works that you may be familiar with and two new acquisitions to the collection that we're showing at the Alphonse for the first time. So this is a piece called Cloud Cities Nebulous Thresholds. It's from 2017. Um, and it's a work that illustrates the interdisciplinary practice um, that Tomas Saraceno has been engaging um, with for years. Saraceno has training both in fine art and architecture. Um, he has also done, done fellowships at MIT and also at NASA in California. And he's very interested in um, bringing together ideas about utopian societies, about the future, about how to live a life, a better quality of life with a cleaner environment. Um, and so his artistic practice is it's not only about aesthetic value or exploration and experimentation with materials, but it's also about imagining how an artist collaborating with scientists and innovators can create something that can improve our life, that can improve society, looking forward to the future. So this is a work that for me helps me to imagine a new world. So this Cloud cities are these structures, as you can see here, that are suspended from the dome. They're created with this iridescent, beautiful plexiglass material. And um, inside of each of these structures, there's a web that you can see with wire um, and threads inside each, each element, each vessel. So this is an idea that um, Sarah has developed over a series 
thinking about how he can create an environment um, where communities can live and develop um, sort of uh, above ground and move forward in space without necessarily needing fuel, oil, or other chemicals. Um, so it's a very utopian idea. It's, it's an idealistic vision of living in the world. Um, but it's also interesting that um, for developing the series, he has, as I mentioned, worked with um, scientists and um, innovators um, in trying to develop a model for what a suspended cities um, uh, composed with multiple clusters could be. And as part of his research, he investigates spider webs. So this, the webs inside these structures are um, perhaps evocative of spider webs. He looks at how other living beings um, construct these kinds of support systems and habitats, um, and he gets inspiration from them. So I think when we bring students to the Alfond um, to look at this work is a great example of how art is put here to work to improve life, to at least um, envision a better world, to be inspired, to think about possibilities, right? And to encourage us to explore beyond what we know and beyond what we have, imagine something better, thinking about the future. And so I included a couple of images here of um, sketches and other projects related to the series, just to give you an idea of how these works can expand to a much larger scale. Um, at the Alfond, of course, suspended in the conservatory, that evokes also the shape or the, the, the um, webbing, right, of spider webs. Uh, that shape uh, is perfect for the work. So I'm going to move on and talk about one of the new acquisitions, most recent acquisitions to the collection is this beautiful painting by Lubaina Himid. Um, she's uh, British, born in 1954 in Zanzibar, moved to the UK with her family when she was very young. This is um, three architects and close-up ideas for development. And this was painted in, in 2019, exhibited last year at the New Museum for the first time in New York, and then came to us and it is currently on display at the Alfond on the first floor at the end of one of the hallways. And so this, this is um, an artist who focuses on narratives in history having to do with colonialism and the legacies of colonialism, and particularly the legacies of colonialism and uh, labor, particularly labor um, done by Black people. And in this particular work, and I like to think that this is an image that help us to imagine a new world and encourage us to explore and imagine and other possibilities. Because if you think about it, she's depicting here three architects, but these are three female architects. And in addition, they are three black female architects. Um, and they are working in this architect, uh, architecture studio, um, trying to design and come up with ideas for designing and developing a new world. So you see some of the implements there um, that architects use, some of the color samples um, in the background, and then sort of those um, uh, paintings within a painting or uh, almost like windows to um, perhaps the ocean, perhaps to the open world. Um, Himid's mother uh, designed textiles and patterns, and that's something that comes across in her use of color and pattern in this world. So I, I feel like the work is almost a metaphor for what black women can think about having in their own hands, the implements, the collaboration to together design a new world for themselves and a new path forward. So it's one of the works in the collection um, on display at the Alfon that helps me to um, feel inspired um, and also uh, that helps me to imagine a different world. And I thought this was a, a timely piece. Um, also, when we are thinking, for instance, this year about um, notions that we have about people from different backgrounds and um, our identities in our society at large, right? She says about um, 
the legacies of colonialism, quote, um, the legacy of slavery, for instance, penetrates a new or relatively new building. Wherever you are on this big colonial map, there's still this relentless legacy of that time and of that trauma, end of quote. And so I think a work like this um, helps us to imagine other possibilities, right? What, what would the world look like if we would be, if we could be able to redesign it, to reimagine it? Um, what would that look like for women um, and for women of color? Um, Himid was the first black artist, a black female artist to win the Turner Prize in 2017. And her work consistently um, looks at the legacy of colonialism. And here are some of her other works as examples. Then I want us to move to another new acquisition to the collection, um, this beautiful painting by Nicole Eisenman, um, installed at the Alphonse also for the first time this week, uh, this, this year, excuse me, has been on view since the summer. This is Sun in My Eye on the Beach from 2019. And Eisenman, um, she's an amazing painter and also sculptor. She's one of, the, of those rare artists who is successful and effective in both media. Um, Eisenman was um, born in France. Uh, she lives in New York. And uh, if you had the opportunity to visit the Whitney Biennial last year, you may have seen her sculpture procession, which was one of the big installation pieces at the Biennial there. So this is a work that um, references her own experience and her own identity. Um, is inspired by the landscape on Fire Island, New York, a place that she visits usually every summer and where she spends time in a community of artists and curators. Um, and you can see the reference to the ocean in the back with that horizontal blue line behind the figure's head. Um, as you can probably see, the figure um, is composed of geometric shapes and very bold, bright brushstrokes. And so Eisenman is one of those artists who um, in the 90s started depicting figures and paying a lot of attention to the representation of the figure um, after several decades, of course, of artists focusing on abstraction. So she recovers this art form and uh, develops a body of work that um, in some cases is a bit humorous. In other cases, it references the legacies of movements like cubism in this in this case um, and expressionism but she makes them her own right so in this case sun in my eye on the beach um, is a work that um, speaks to her experience of that particular place um, as a person but also speaks to her experience as an artist and if you look at the top register of the painting you see this gray it almost looks like there's a storm coming um, but nevertheless, she has a, a ray of sun piercing her eye, her right eye. And the sun, the ray there is almost like a cylinder that's piercing her face uh, or the face of this figure. This is a work that um, for me, um, and of course, it's so bright and so beautiful in the context of the Alphandin, but also helps me to imagine what it's like to revisit the legacy of these artistic movements, for instance, from the first half of the 20th century that were traditionally dominated by men. When you think about Cubism, you think about Picasso and Brack, um, and then you think about abstract expressionism and Jackson Pollock and uh, Willem de Kooning, and all these big iconic figures were most of them white men, right? And so here we see Eisenman sort of appropriating these, these art forms um, and these practices, making them her own and bringing them to her experience of this particular place and to her own context and her place in her world. Uh, she says, I have a quote by her here. She says, quote, I paint the figure because I know the world through my body, end of quote. So she's really thinking about her context and her, surrounding, her surroundings as they reflect 
from her and her own experience. And so I find this piece very inspiring um, and it's very beautiful. And we're very glad that we have it at the Alphand Inn. Here are a few of um, Nicole Eisenman's paintings on the right and on the lower left. Um, and on the top left, we see her sculpture procession that I referred to, uh, referred to late, uh, earlier, which was displayed outside uh, as part of the works in the 2019 Whitney Biennial, which was a very impactful and impressive work. And I want us to end this tour today with one of my favorite works in the collection. This one is Citizen of the World by Meshak Daba. It's from 2012. And this work is installed in the lobby of the Alphand Inn, and you can see it here. And I wanted to include these images so that you can uh, have a, a sense for its size um, and also its presence behind the concierge uh, desk at the Alphand Inn. So Gaba was born in Benin um, and spends his time between Benin and Rotterdam. And he is really a, an international global uh, artist who approaches his art and his practice through that lens uh, because of this uh, multiple cultural identities, European and African, African and European in his uh, lived experience and also in his, um, in his works. A lot of his pieces incorporate flags, uh, flags from different countries of the world, coins, bills, things that have um, currency, but also that have a lot of symbolic value in, in culture and in the global, um, in, in the global sphere, right? So a lot of his work is about cultural identity and globalization, migration movements of people to different places with a um, sense for uh, bringing people together and creating works that unify us instead of divide us. And that's one of the things that I love about this piece in particular because it speaks to one of the main points of the mission of Rollins College, which is to prepare our students for global citizenship. And so here in Citizen of the World, we can see that, I'm um, gonna go back one, we can see that um, Gaba has attempted here to create um, a global flag. So he has taken the, the flags of all the countries in the world, and he has created this sort of uh, vortex or, or point where all of the flags come together. So when you look around the edges, of the piece, you may be able to identify some of the uh, flags, but as you look to the center, they all come together and really they blend together, they become one. Right? So it's a very uplifting and optimistic message of, of unity and of hope. And I think in this um, uh, idea, thinking about works that help us to imagine a different world that encourages that encourage us to explore or that inspire us to connect. I think these are great examples for that, and the work by Gaba sort of uh, brings it all together. So here are a few examples of uh, other works by Misha Gaba, where he's uh, using uh, the idea of the flag, a, a symbol that identifies um, and stands for large groups of people um, from different experiences and different backgrounds that nevertheless identify with that particular symbol. Um, and here configured in different ways, we see the globe um, with all the flags on the right, um, the tent on the left, which is part of a project that he has done where families can go in the tent and do different types of art making activities. Um, and then the reference to the United Nations and the different countries um, on the lower right. So these are some of the some of the works that we have at the Alphon that speak to some of these ideas of uh, reimagining and unity, which I think where we are right now, especially in 2020, 
um, with everything that has happened this year, which we acknowledge and we have works, other works in the collection that speak more directly to some of the events that have taken place this year. These are four works that inspired me and that helped me to feel hopeful about the future and also that make me, um, that remind me about the important work that artists do um, in our communities and in our world to bring us all together. So with that, I wanted to thank you for joining us. Remind you that if you would like to visit the museum, which is open to the public, you can visit our website at rollins.edu slash CFAM to reserve free time tickets to go visit the exhibitions at the museum. You can follow us on social media at CFAM Rollins. And if you're interested in reading more about the works in the Austin collection, we have the Art for Rollins uh, volumes one, two, and three pictured here that you can obtain at the museum store, or you can visit our website it's collection pages to read more about our collection. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye.